Hi, Emily. Hi, Emily. So, so in your last video, you talked, you talked about, about this, this book. book. It has this, it metaphor, has this metaphor about different, different perspectives, perspectives and how stereo vision, you need multiple perspectives to different eyes in order to get the information you need. How reality is not contained in any particular viewpoint. It's a nice metaphor, so I'm going to relate that book to a book I just read. Julian Jane, The Origin of Consciousness in the Breakdown of the Bicameral Mind. So I first heard of this book and its theory, and I couldn't believe I'd never heard of it before. Uh, in this book, Maps of the Mind, this book contains 60 different theories of how the mind works. Maslow, Pribram, Freud, Yin and Yang, and one of those theories was this one by Julian James about the bicameral mind. When I read it, especially in the context of this book, 60 different theories, most of which I've heard before, this one stuck out as just being absolutely different from anything else I had heard before. James' theory is that human beings only became conscious about 3,000 years ago, and for the 10 or so thousand years before that, the brain was kind of split, and there was the half of the brain that tells you what to do in like this godlike voice that you hear in your head, and the part of your brain that listens to that voice and just acts on it. He cites the Iliad as an example of how this works. A completely unconsciously, with no thought, decision, conception of self or soul, people would hear the voices of the gods, which were actually the other half of their brain, telling them what to do, and would just have no choice but to do it. Didn't even think of it as a choice. We're not self aware. So the idea that without culture and language and words like I and soul and self, human beings would never develop consciousness, would never integrate the two parts of their mind. So the question is, is it worth it to read this book, even if it's completely wrong? 3,000 years ago, humans weren't conscious, and now they are because of just cultural changes, a completely cultural revolution that magically took place across the entire world at basically the same time, but it was in my head and it just stuck with me as something other and different, a different perspective. And then at a different point I was talking with Alan about this book and some other books, and he said, there's this book which I like to say is my favorite book that can't possibly be true, Julian Jane's The Origin of Conscious and the Breakdown of the Bicameral Mind. And I'm like, oh yeah, I've heard of that book, it sounded fascinating but nuts. And I read it, and I perfectly agree with Alan's description. Part of why the theory is so beautiful to me is probably that inner struggle that makes you just wish you really did have it half of your mind that would just tell you what to do and make it easy. Jesus' theory on how certain religions formed in response to this loss of the voice of the gods. That now you had to have faith in the gods instead of just hearing your voice in your head and how difficult this was for humanity. It's kind of amazing how much evidence and how many different phenomena he brings into this theory. And that's something I found very impressive, that most theories of consciousness don't even attempt to explain very much. And it's very good reading, had a lot of good thought. And it made me think of the book we were just talking about, because even if it's not the right perspective, it's still a valuable perspective. And it's very novelty, it's very wrongness, is what helps to create a richer world and a richer way of thinking about the world. As Alan says, a different perspective is worth 100 IQ points, and this book certainly provides a different perspective. And it's very fun to read. Okay, bye.